All right, so now let's talk about the logistics for this course. And this is really important, particularly when we get to the part about grading and what's required and not required. So the course structure, we have several parts of the course. The first part are lectures. These are online and they're required. So these are not optional. You have to watch all the lectures online. Inside these quizzes, inside, sorry, the lectures, there are self-assessment quizzes. And these are not graded. So the reason we have these quizzes for feedback, feedback to you telling you what you were understood and feedback to us telling you what you missed. So we use the feedback from these quizzes to help us do a better job in class figuring out what we need to review and what we need to improve in the class. And for you, they help you understand if you got the material in the lecture. So lectures online required. The book is optional but recommended. It's a very good book. It's very easy to read. Now, all the exam material for this class is in the lectures. You do not need the book, but we recommend it. It's a good place to start. It's a good place to refresh. So this part right here, this is the background material in the class. So you do the lectures on your own. You read the book on your own. The lectures are required. The book is not. Then we have practice problems. The practice problems you do in class if you're an on-campus student or you do at home with a colleague if you're a distance student. And these are required, but they're not graded. It's pass-fail. Either you did the practice problems or you didn't do them. This is for you to practice. We don't want to set a grade on them. We want you to practice them. And then there are labs in the class. So we really would like you to do labs in pairs. We think it's good for learning and makes it easier for you. And these are required and they are graded. So this is the active problem solving part of the class. So the background material required lectures online. The book, we recommend it, but it's optional. And then required practice problems, which you either do in class or at home if you're a local or distance student and then required labs, which you do in pairs, and these ones are graded. So that's the structure of the course. Now, how is the course graded? It's 60% for the written final exam and 40% for the participation in the class. So how is the participation calculated? It's the average of your five lab grades. So the grade you get for participation is based on your lab grades. If it's less than a three, you get a U for the particip participation part. You also get a U if you don't complete the lectures on time. So remember I said the lectures are required. Well, if you don't do the lectures, you get a U for the participation part of the class. You also get a U if you don't participate in the practice problems. You get a U if the labs aren't turned in on time. This here is designed to say you have to do this stuff. And the reason we're forcing you to do these things is because it's an important part of learning in this class to do it. If you don't do this stuff on time, you fall behind in the class and it's a waste of everyone's time. Now, we don't want to be too cruel to you, so you can see these little asterisks in here. You get eight late days for any of these. So if you're sick or you have to travel or you have a conflict, you can use a late day to delay these. So if you need to turn in your lab late or if you didn't get to watch the lecture on time or you can't make it to class, you may use one of your late days. You have to tell us you're going to use a late day before the deadline, but you may use them. So please remember this. You have eight late days. You can use these as you see fit, but tell us before the deadline. Now, the details of all of this is in the syllabus on the website. I expect everyone to have read the syllabus. It has details about grading, expectations, content, and how the class works. You are expected to know that material, and if you haven't read it, that's your problem. I need to make sure that you understand that material, and it's all in there. So please read it. So, how can you learn the most in this class? To learn the most in this class, you're going to watch all the lectures on time, read the book, and do that after watching the lectures, because it's easier to read it after you've watched the lectures. Do the practice problems, either in class or on time if you're a distance student, and do the labs on time. You do all this stuff, and it will maximize how much you learn in this class. Of course, I realize most people are interested in the following. How do I pass the class with the least amount of effort? And if I'm a good teacher, Learning the most and passing the class with the least effort should be the same sort of thing because my job is to get you to learn the material. So here's how you go about passing the class with the least effort. Watch the lectures on time. Skim the book after watching the lectures. You don't have to read the whole thing. Look through it. Read the parts that look interesting. You'll have the bigger picture from the lectures. Do the practice problems in class or on time and do the labs on time. So the difference between learning the most and passing with the least effort is that you should skim the book if you want to pass with the least effort instead of reading it if you really want to learn the most. All right, how can you get help in this class? So the way to get help is talking to the TAs or the instructors during their office hours. 
and those are posted on the website. You can ask questions either in class or online. Now do not send emails to the teacher or the TA. We're not going to answer them. Use the course discussion form. When you post questions in the course discussion form, everyone can see them and you can answer everyone at once. You can post private questions, group questions, you can answer other students' questions. That's how to communicate with us electronically. We'll answer the questions posted on the forum by the next office hours at the latest. So that's when you should expect to get an answer. If the office hours are on Wednesday and you post a question on Tuesday, you'll get the answer by the office hours the next Wednesday. You can also review on your own. All the lectures are online. Go watch them again, rewind, find the parts you want, and of course you've got the book to review. So there are lots of ways to get help in this class. The most important one, however, is with other students. So we want collaborative work. You'll be doing your practice problems together. You'll be doing your labs together. You're not allowed to cheat, so you, and there's a description of this in the syllabus for details, but we want you to work with people to help and get help and do a better job. So what's the schedule for the class? Well, take a look at the website for the specific due dates, but in general, the class can have four labs and 13 lectures, and the lectures, as we said, have to be watched before the class meetings, and inside these lectures, we have these self-assessment quizzes. They're not graded, but we use them to know how we should, what we should talk about in class. There are 13 readings. They're optional, as I said, but it's a good book. The feedback we've gotten from students in the past is that you skim it after watching the lectures, and that's the most effective way to use the book. And then we have a bunch of practice problems. So these are required. You either do them in class or you submit them online if you're a distance student. And for these, you work with other students to get lots of help, and you get help from us while you're doing them. And finally, there's an exam. So, I've emphasized this several times here, but there are due dates in this class. These due dates, you have to keep up with the material because there's so much material in this class. The due dates are required, they're not optional, so keep up with them or you get in trouble. Of course, you have late days that you can use them, but a late day doesn't delay everything in the class, just one thing. So if you use too many late days, you're going to find all your assignments piling up on you. Now, the online website is called ScalableLearning.com, and when you log into it, you'll first see a calendar with all of your lectures and when they're due. We strongly recommend use the Chrome web browser, but Firefox and Safari work pretty well too. When you watch your lectures on here, you'll see on the side all of your lectures with little check marks for the parts that you've finished. And inside the lectures, you have these questions that we talked about. And you also have two little buttons down here. You can click on the question mark to ask a question right in the video, and the teacher will get the question that you asked. And you can click on this Confused button if you're confused. Okay, so this is a way for you to give us feedback about the lectures as you're watching them. The discussion forms on Piazza. We're posting all the questions there, not using email. Piazza allows you to vote for answers, so if students ask good questions, you can vote on them. You can sort questions by topic, so questions for Lab 2 can all be put together on Lab 2. You can ask private questions. So if you want to ask a question directly to the instructors, you can send a question just to the instructors. When you go to submit labs and turn in practice problems that need to be turned in, you upload them to Stent Portalen, standard as always. Now registering for this class, you're going to set, we will send out detailed instructions for how you register. You need to have an email address that works listed in Student Portalen, and you need to register on Piazza, and you need to register on Scalable Learning for this course. If you do not have an email listed in Student Portalen, this is going to be a problem. You need to fix that. So make sure you're registered today so you can keep up with the course. Remember about late days. You have eight of them. You can use them whenever you want, but you have to tell us before the deadline. And remember, this does not postpone your other assignments. So if you use all eight late days, you will have pushed a whole bunch of the course later back, and you're going to find that it gets even harder as that catches up with you. So try to keep on top of things.